Erin Busby, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being here today. Thanks so much for having me, Cheryl. I'm really excited to talk to you today. I feel like we have so many things in common and such a synergistic background. Yeah, definitely, definitely. We both have a background in journalism. And I actually heard about you and your channel, I want to say several years ago. I was listening to a podcast. It was Natalie Ekdahl's podcast, the Biz Chicks podcast. And I heard your story and your background. And then I immediately went to your YouTube channel and was blown away. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. That is such a compliment coming from you. I love Natalie, by the way. I was like um, under, I was one of her students. She was coaching me for a full year and it was really, she was really amazing. She's amazing and just so, so smart to pull all of these amazing business owners together. And, And that's one of the things that I know we'll talk about together today. Mm-hmm. Um, let's, let's get started by talking about how you went from journalism to video creator to YouTube channel superstar. <laughs> and I have to say superstar because I just checked. You have 325,000 subscribers on YouTube. That's not an easy feat at all. <laughs> I think you know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, but it's funny because I still look at that number and I'm like, I need more followers. I got to have more, more, more. It's like mm-hmm. never enough. Um, no, it's such a weird, it, it's such a like strange path I've been on, but I feel like it's also just fallen into place exactly how it was meant to be and supposed to be. So after um, working in journalism for a decade at, in TV news, um, I met my husband in New York City and He's Texan and he wanted to take care of his mom, which you have to love and admire. And so he said, would you be open to moving to Texas with me? And so, of course, I was pretty ready for change anyway. And so when I moved to Texas with him, we got married, we moved to Texas. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do, you know, and I kind of made the rounds to the local news stations and uh, I just wasn't feeling it. And so my husband said to me, he's like, well, what would you do for free? And you've got to think about that. And I thought that was a really powerful question, a really amazing question. And I said, you know, I just want to help women look pretty. Like, that's really what I want to do. (laughs) And he said, well, then that's what you should do. And so basically that morphed into a wardrobe consulting business. So I started helping women one-on-one with their wardrobes, going into their closets, doing edits, organizing, styling clothes for them, shopping with them. And I used my TV background to kind of get the word out that I was doing this. You know, I pitched the local lifestyle show. I was like, I'm, you know, this is my gig and I'm a style expert. And so pretty quickly quickly, I was able to make inroads there um, through networking. And that really, you know, set me off on that course of styling women. And I did that for five years. I loved it. It was terrific. But there was a point where I was like, okay, there's only one of me and there's no way to grow and scale this business unless I hire team members or find another way to grow and scale because I only have so many hours in a day. And then that's when I came across affiliate marketing. And I'm sure you know what affiliate marketing is, but for those who don't, it's just basically your ability to create a hyperlink or URL that's custom for you so that anytime there's a sale through your link, you make a commission. So it's just basically you're recommending other people's products and you make a commission on every sale. So once I discovered affiliate marketing um, and I was able to get into a reputable affiliate marketing program, specifically reward style, uh, I was off and running. I was like, I'm going to use all of the skills that I glean while working with women one-on-one and I'm going to share that information for free through my website and turn my business model into this affiliate marketing business model. Fantastic. And And did you automatically turn to video because that was your background? Was YouTube the first thing that you tried to create and then tie it to your blog? It's funny because in a way, my video background was almost an impediment to me starting a YouTube channel. And you'll get this. Yes, totally. Because when I started YouTube, it was not like the YouTube today. It was more raw, more real, you know, bad lighting, bad setup, you know, super unprofessional and raw, right? When you have a TV background, you know, you have this inclination and desire to like make it really polished and professional and slick. And nobody wanted that back then. So I I had to like get over that in a sense in order to start YouTube. But I did make that decision out of the gate to do both 
the blog and the YouTube channel because I felt like, as you know, video is very powerful. And I felt like that would be the way to really teach women and to really reach women because you can only do so much to connect with other women um, via, you know, writing and a website. Mm -hmm. But video, there's so much more power in that. So yeah, I created both at the same time. And that was six years ago. Oh my gosh, it's been so long. Wow. So yeah, I've been an influencer, both YouTuber and blogger for six years. But it's been Was there instant success once you made that decision? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're laughing. Oh gosh, no. I mean, <laughs> is there ever instant success in anything? Everything, <laughs> everything takes um, hard work and sacrifice. Um, no. I had some instant, I was making instant money because I had this really loyal, wonderful client base that I could say, Hey, here's what I'm doing now. Hope you'll support me. And they did. And so I immediately was making income, but we're talking about hobby money. You know, we're not talking about like real tangible income. Yeah, like send your college, send your kid to college kind of money. Like not that. <laughs> no, no. I mean, now we're talking about send your kid to college money. <laughs> Absolutely. But that, that took, that was a six year process. I was looking at your channel and it's, it really is. Please if you're, if you're watching the video, listening to the show, check out her channel. It's Busby style. And first of all, I checked out one of your videos and I immediately went upstairs and I changed. Uh, the video was, um, <laughs> hang on, it's how to look expensive, number one styling tips. <laughs> it's your most popular video right now with like over 2 million views. But um, what I noticed is the consistency. It is the, 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 and I just have to say the consistency is what I've noticed. And was that something you started right in the very beginning or you just, you, I mean, cause your background in news, our background, we realize that if you're not there on a regular basis, people don't know how to find you. They don't need you necessarily every day, but if you're there every day, they'll find you if they have a need. It's so funny that you mentioned that because I didn't think about the consistency out of the gate coming from the news background, but I think you're right. I think that's where I generated, I just knew instinctively that that was important because of that news background, out of sight, out of mind, right? You have to be there, be present, develop that community, and that comes from being present and having that schedule and being able to upload every single week. So out of the gate, I was uploading one video every single week on Wednesday, and then I was uploading... Um, or publishing three blog posts at least on the website wow. every single week. Now I'm up to two videos a week and I do three to five blog posts every week. It's a lot of content. It's a lot of content. So we work with content creators. Our community, uh, much like Natalie Ekdahl's, she has a community of business owners. We have a community of video creators and the community is all in, in various stages, but they know whether they're an organization, a nonprofit, or a solo business owner, they know that video is where they want to be. And hearing how you are a content machine might feel a little overwhelming. Can you talk a little bit about some of your process and, and is it just you making all this happen? Uh, no, I have an amazing team and it just sort of evolved organically where um, I was talking to a family friend, they had a daughter that was graduating from college, I said, well, if she wants an internship, I would be happy to give her an internship. And she started as my intern. She's now my first full-time employee. Wow. And she's also a rock star. She's a total rock star. But I, I also have a lot of contractors. So I have my one full-time employee, Caitlin, that helps me with so many things, specifically with um, assembling blog posts. She's now gotten my voice down so she can write my blog posts as well. And then I go in and I edit, just make tweaks here and there. But she also does, you know, the visual part of it, which is the photo selection, which is very key when you're a fashion blogger to have the right visuals and video creator. You've got to have the visuals for sure. Um, and then I have just a whole other bunch of contractors. So I just knew, you know, pretty quickly as things were taking off, I, there are things that I'm not great at. And those are the things I need to get off my plate. So I hired a bookkeeper. Um, I have a virtual CFO. I have a woman um, that I hired who is just all data. All, that's all she does is data. I have so much data. I mean, there's so much yeah. stuff. 
just numbers. And literally I'm one of those people that if I look at a spreadsheet, I glaze over. <laughs> it's not my strength. So I have Lane who put together a key performance indicator dashboard for me so I can look and see really quickly like where my YouTube subs are, where my views are for the month, where's my Google revenue for the month, what does my um, Google analytics look like, how many um, unique visits do I have that month, how many page views do I have have that month. Um, I can also look at the top line profit versus the bottom line revenue. Like I have it all in this really beautiful visual, very visual dashboard that she put together for me. And she keeps on, um, on top of the numbers and she can tell me like what the value of an email subscriber is to me in terms of money. Like what is the dollar value of an email subscriber? And then what is the monetary value of an Instagram follower? I know this all sounds very like specific, but this is the kind of stuff that we have to do. And then also the other thing that she helps me look at is just the price point that people want, um, in terms of spending, like what, what is like the sweet spot? What is the price point? So I have lane and then who else? I've got a video editor because at a certain point, that's something you can outsource, even though I love editing. Um, and I obviously, having the news background, know the concepts of editing, um, pretty well. And I have an operations manager slash virtual assistant who manages my email inbox and my calendar. Um, a photographer who takes all my pictures and also does the editing for the pictures. I have a graphics person who does all of my blog graphics as well as my YouTube thumbnails and any, any graphics that we need. Um, I just hired a brand strategist that I am really excited about because I just really want to get super clear on the woman that I'm talking to and the woman that I want to attract, which I think is really important. And I'm in yeah. the very preliminary stages of product development. So um, the brand strategist, strategist is going to help with the product development side as well. How so. exciting to really see and to really be clear on where this will go, right? Because in the beginning, I think... Um, it's, it sounds like when you started, you're just like so many people and, and you and I, since we have similar black backgrounds, all the things you were talking about money wise, they don't teach that as a reporter. <laughs> I never oh, learned yeah. that on the job, yeah. but how exciting that now the metrics that can be handed to you, you, you know, you need to look for them and you know what to do with them once you see them, which is really, really exciting. Yeah. And I think for, for your community, you know, when they're thinking about the world of video. And I know that can be very overwhelming and it may be, they don't have this journalism or TV background, you know, just thinking about the things that you might be able to outsource to make it less overwhelming for you. Cause I think sometimes you can get caught in that almost like implementation paralysis where you're like, this seems so overwhelming. I can't, I don't even know where to start. So just thinking about what aspects of it you can outsource, like maybe you do hire a video editor that can help you um, on the editing side. Maybe you, maybe you even have somebody help you structure the video itself. Yeah. And for my community, a lot of the fear in the very beginning is themselves on camera. So once mm -hmm. we get them past that hump, then the rest of it is a lot easier to outsource as they have businesses already established. Once you know what you want to say, you actually have to be the one to say it, then you can get the help editing and, and publishing and posting and all of that other stuff. But unfortunately, the first part of that is getting over that hurdle of knowing that you want to be the face of your business and then getting the words out of your mouth, right? <laughs> That's a yeah. bit of a And I do sometimes. think some people think like, oh, you either have this thing or you don't. And you and I both know, oh. I mean, if you, if you saw my first live shot in TV news. Like, oh my God. I'm glad that's not the, around for me. <laughs> I know at the maple, I was at the maple syrup tree, like tapping maple syrup, <laughs> like, Hey guys, live from the maple syrup tree, you know, I'm, I, but it was horrible, horrible. <laughs> And even when I first started doing YouTube, like I had been away from news for a couple years and I was really rusty. Um, and it's just one of those things. It's like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the stronger it gets. So you just start with like, maybe start doing like Instagram stories and then you progress to maybe a Facebook live and then you just start taping videos. And next thing you know, it becomes, it becomes like second nature. It's like, it becomes like having a conversation like we're having right now. People, um, people will tag me. Like I don't, it, I was um, on TV before YouTube, uh, thankfully I say, 
but people will tag me with videos that they've kept <laughs> from way back then. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> thanks so oh, much yeah. for sharing that. <laughs> I had a couple of those surface I, one, like a former coworker just sent me one. It was like some big snowstorm in upstate New York. I was like, Oh my gosh, please. <laughs> Are we friends? Cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is like so mean. Why would you do this to me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, too funny. Well, one of the things that I know businesses uh, struggle with, I wonder if this is worth the time. Mm. You have built it to a business with people who are now helping you and uh, the subscribers you have and, and the money that comes with it um, is, is one thing. But for a business who has a stream of income through another way, through clients, mm -hmm. through one-to-one, -one, through whatever they have currently, they might wonder the return on this investment. The fear, first of all, of getting on camera. So that's like a time investment. <laughs> but then the monetary investment in equipment or mm -hmm. any, any sort of whatever investment that they're trying to make for this. Is it worth it? And, and what tips do you have for them who or trying to figure out video or YouTube or both? Mm. I think it would depend mostly on what you're doing or what you're trying to do. But mm. I think for, if, you, if you're trying to sell something, you need to have video. I, I think absolutely you need to have a video. Um, even if it's service, doesn't matter if it's service or product, because as you know, video is so incredibly powerful. And there's something that comes across through video that does not come across through any kind of imagery or writing. Yes, those are powerful mediums too, but they're not as powerful as video because you can really connect with people through video. People are emotionally connected to you through video. They feel like you're, you are their friend and they know by watching you if they can trust you, if they think that you're believable, if they think you have integrity, if they think you know what you're talking about, if you speak with authority and expertise, they can feel it. And it just brings this, it brings your, whatever you're selling, the service or the product to the next level. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, I have people, um, this is kind of weird, but like I have people everywhere I go who will stop me and say, oh my gosh, I follow you on YouTube. And <laughs> they, they, I mean that it is weird, right? Totally. But it, they feel like they're my friend and I, I get that. And I feel the same way. Like I love my community, but it's a totally different connection. And when you really do like a deep dive into sales, you know that it's not just about like, oh, I created this service or this product and it solves a problem and it's a really great product. It's more than that. It's an emotional peace. It's an emotional thing. And they have to feel that emotional component. Yep. And I feel like video is the way to go to achieve that. Now, whether that's just videos on your website or starting a YouTube channel, I think that's going to depend on, on what the business is. But if you said you have a couple of clients who are CPAs, like if I were a CPA, I would be all over posting YouTube videos right now because during this t very strange time, this COVID time, I think people want to, to hear from CPAs. And they have so much to say. I mean, they really have so yeah. much to say. Everything's about your money and how you're managing it and taxes and such. And well, and how to salvage your business, the PPP loans, like all yeah. of that stuff. They could be all over that. And YouTube right now is pushing any of that COVID-related content, the algorithm, so they could really garner a ton of views in a short amount of time. You have such experience. So because I have your ear right now, I'm going to ask you them. Okay. Do you think that it is different now if you're going to start a channel right now mm -hmm. and, or maybe you've let it go dormant. Maybe you post some like mm -hmm. once a year, <laughs> which for consistency is not very good, but how, how can you succeed on YouTube right now? If you, if, if somebody heard what you just said and they are ready to go all in on their CPA business or their insurance company and they are gonna take it and put it on YouTube. What are your suggestions for surviving and thriving right now on YouTube? Okay, uh, it is a different landscape than it was when I first started and I really wish that I knew then what I know now, but I don't. So here's what I would suggest. I would suggest definitely getting amazing audio. 
audio, people will forgive video and lighting. They won't forgive audio. So making sure that you have incredible audio. When I first started, the video part didn't matter as much. The lighting part didn't matter as much, but now it's a little more important that your video looks more professional. People have become accustomed to a more professional video, but that doesn't necessarily mean like our TV studio professional. It could be like you're in front of a, a window and you have this beautiful natural light flooding in like I do right now. Or maybe you get one ring light and you put that in front of your face and that's beautiful lighting. Um, and you have a decent background. You just, you know, you have common sense about I don't have a pile of laundry behind me or banana peels or garbage or kids running around. You know, you're just very mindful of the background. <laughs> um, same as you would with a Zoom call, really. Right. But you want to make sure that it is, um, it, it's a decent quality video with decent lighting, but the audio has to be perfect. That's really important. Um, the other components are you need a great thumbnail and that's easy to throw away if you People are like, eh, thumbnail, whatever. Um, thumbnail is like a book cover. It's a really big deal. I mean, that's why I have a graphics person working on my thumbnails. When I put together outlines for videos, like I'll put together a Word doc with, with an outline for a video, um, there's always a thumbnail concept in the outline out of the gate because the thumbnail is almost as important as the video itself. So really drilling down and figuring out what is that thumbnail going to look like. And, and do you come up with that or do you work on it together with your team? Um, sometimes I ask the team for their input, but mostly I come up with the concepts on my own and then I send the concept as well as the visuals over to the graphics person and she puts them together and she sends them back to me and we usually go through one or two revisions. So it's a whole thing. It's, <laughs> it's not a throwaway. I don't just like throw it together in Canva. It's like I really thoughtfully put these together. And then I even take it a step further and I make sure that the thumbnail pops on mobile because something like 63% of my viewers are actually watching my videos on their phone. Mm -hmm. So I have to make sure the thumbnail not only pops in general, but pops and you can read it clearly on a mobile device as well. So the, the font choice is really important as well if you're doing text on your thumbnail. And then your tags are another element and that's sort of the third piece of the puzzle. The tags are like what you would, you know, what you would do in a in, in blog post when you have like metadata. Um, you have to have words that you think people would search as your tags. Mm. Um, and there is a, a program called TubeBuddy. Mm -hmm. It will help you to put together thoughtful tags that will garner more views for you. Okay. So those are the kind of three key tips. And then in terms of your performance, because you did mention like a lot of people have performance anxiety or anxiety about being on, on camera in general. Um, you just want to think about how would I talk to my mom or my best friend? And, and if you can do that and just have, like you said before, a normal conversation, then your videos will be great. The, the key is authenticity. And if you're not authentic and if you don't have a good command of what you're saying, um, you know, people will sniff that out in a minute and they won't, they'll click away. So you have to make sure that you know your stuff, which I'm sure you do if you already have a business. And then also that that comes across on camera. So it may be practicing too. Yeah. You may just like practice a few times. And then by the fourth time, you're like, I know this stuff inside out and backwards. Well, I can do great on YouTube for sure, because yeah. I think um, it's interesting that people do have this this hesitation. They they are experts. They're experts mm -hmm. in their industry, and then you add that layer of the camera, and that is what creates a lot of anxiety. Um, but watching so many other people in in all kinds of industries do well on YouTube is is really inspiring. Um, love to hear more about how you help your audience help your community. Um, your channel is specifically for women who are interested in, in looking better, feeling better, looking better, leveling, in up, leveling up their fashion. So how, um, how has that journey been uh, in terms of the growth? Because I think zero to a thousand is, is a milestone, a thousand to 100,000, I imagine, but at 325,000 subscribers, there's, there's, you know, maybe a, a, a change in your audience maybe, or how, how did you look at uh, 
your messaging as you grew? One of the tips I forgot to mention, and I'm glad you brought this up because it made me think of it, the riches are in the niches. So if you are going to start a YouTube channel and there is such a competitive landscape now and it is very saturated, you have to make sure that you really find a niche that makes sense for you. Um, If you try to appeal to everyone, you will appeal to no one. So make sure that you choose a really thoughtful niche. So my niche is fashion ideas for busy women juggling life over 40. And I, that was my niche from day one. I, I'm, I'm about to turn 46 and I just felt like there were all of these 20 somethings on YouTube giving all these, you know, beauty tips and fashion tips. But as we get older, our needs change and how we dress changes. And I wanted to address that woman. I wanted to address women like me who are just trying to survive, who are like, oh my gosh, like, you know, you have kids and um, and you're juggling, you know, the cleaning and the cooking and the carpool and the kids and the husband and the house and the, you know, the whole thing. All of it. And you're so overwhelmed. And like, next thing you know, you wake up and you know, one of the first things to go is your style and your appearance. And you kind of are sitting in your closet and you're almost in tears and you're just like, what happened? Like, who am I and what do I do? And, and so that's something I just saw over and over and over again when I'm seeing clients. I'm like, this is the woman I want to talk to. This is the woman I want to help. I just want to make it simple for her. I know she's in survival mode. I know she's overwhelmed. And I just want to take the guesswork out of it for her and just break it down in a way that is so easy for her that she, um, she, she will be able to look like the best version of herself. And, and also just kind of impart the importance of that because again, as busy women juggling life, we, we kind of, you know, feel like, ah, that's not that important. We can put this on the back burner. It's fr- it's superficial. It's frivolous. Uh, I got to take care of everybody else. I don't need to take care of me. But the reality is it's, it's very important. It's very powerful. The more you take care of you, the more you have to give everybody else, the better mom you are, the better wife, friend, sister, et cetera. So it's just like the old airplane thing. You know, you put on your mask first and then you help everybody else. You know, if you take care of you, um, you're just going to have more to give everybody else. And so I, I, I really wanted to share that message with my, with my community as well. I love that. I love, and I imagine your community has, has heard that loud and clear. Have you help, heard that from folks who've watched your, your videos, um, taken part in anything that you put out there that they feel what they, they feel what you had intended for them to feel a little more peace, a little more fashion forward, <laughs> a, a little less like, I don't know what I, what I'm going to wear, how I can look better. You heard that from them? Absolutely. I, I have a folder in my email inbox and I save every email that I get that is like that or every comment like that, because ultimately that's why I do it. That's why I work so hard. And that's why it never feels like work. I just, I get, I get so much joy from reading those emails of, Hey, you know, I, I was lost. I was depressed. I didn't feel like myself. And now I'm more confident. I have an extra spring in my step. I get compliments all the time. My husband tells me I'm sexy, you know, that's life changing. And that I have a part in that is, is incredible. I, I feel so lucky that I, that I get to be that for, for some of these women. I mean, there's nothing better than that. Awesome. Well, what's, what's next for you? Um, you, you spoke a little bit about product development and some of the things that you're planning for your business. Um, what's ahead? How can people find you? How can we support you? Oh, thank you so much for asking that. And before I talk about what's next, I just wanted to let you know that I made a freebie for your listeners so they can access that freebie at busbystyle.com slash standout. Um, And that is going to be wardrobe basics checklist. So when I was seeing clients, one of the biggest problems that women have, and I realized over and over and over again, because it happened every single time that they didn't have their basics covered. Because when we walk into a store, we like, we want the sequins and the, the, the shiny and the sparkly, right? We don't want the basics because it's not like fun to buy basics, right? So I just created these checklists so that you can go through and make sure like, 
oh, okay, I have all of these essential pieces that I need in order for my wardrobe to function. Um, and that's really one of the key cornerstones to making sure you have a functional, usable wardrobe that really does save you time and money. And you're not going to be standing there in your closet going, oh my gosh, I have nothing to wear. Um, but for me, you know, I am like six years into this and I'm, I don't know, just during COVID and the quarantine, I had this epiphany. It's like, what am I waiting for in the product side? I've wanted to develop products for a long time. And so I just decided I'm going to jump in. So I'm in the very early stages of developing a handbag and wow. it's going to be a multi multifunctional handbag, um, backpack slash work tote. And I'm really excited about it and I'm doing it on my own. There's no brand involved because before I was like, Oh, I got to do this with a brand. And I was waiting for that. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to wait anymore. Just doing it myself. So that's what's next. And I'm, I'm really, really excited about it. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. Oh, that's amazing. When, um, when it comes out, we'll have to see if we can connect with you again. Um, and you'll have another story to tell about how you created your own product. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm it. doing it so that everybody in my community is going to be participating in the creation process. Oh. So I'm actually going to do a video probably next week where I show the preliminary designs for the bag. And there are four of them. So I'm going to let viewers weigh in on the design <laughs> and I'm going to keep them you know, throughout this whole process, helping me with the creation process. I want them to feel connected to it and part of it. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Something you said um, earlier in the interview was, um, is wherever you go, YouTube, YouTube, your YouTube audience finds you and says, I feel like I know you. And that's the experience that I know you and I had in TV news, where you'd go in whatever city you lived in and people would go to you in the grocery store or um, wherever working out and would say, Oh, you know, I saw you on TV last night. I like that story, whatever. And that's what, that's what people can create now for themselves, which is really powerful is they can create an audience that spans the globe just through video that they post on YouTube. Now you may, you know, they may not get to 325,000 subscribers. They may, they may not, but it doesn't matter because what you're doing is you're building an audience of people who you can connect with and, and, mm -hmm. and serve. So I just thought that was really neat that, um, that you recreated that situation in another area of your professional life. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. You know, it's funny. One of the things I used to say when I was younger was that I wanted my own lifestyle. I wanted to host a lifestyle show. Yeah. And I actually did hope when I was doing it, I was like, I don't, I don't really like this. I was uh, auditioning, filling in or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, um, I didn't like it. <laughs> you know, I was just not into it. Um, but that was like the dream way back when I wanted to host a lifestyle show. And so it's funny. I think about it now and I'm like, I'm hosting a lifestyle show. Mm -hmm. It's just my own. It's your own. And that's so much cooler. It's so powerful. Mm -hmm. Erin, thank you so much for sharing these really phenomenal tips and ideas with our audience. Thank you for your time. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for having me, Cheryl. I really enjoyed it.